show, my next guest tonight puts on the most energetic stage performances in all of rock music, next to myself perhaps. His highly personal style of rock and roll fills stadiums and sells millions of albums. Please welcome the Motor City Madman, Mr. Ted Nugent. Uh, thank you for uh, being here, and uh, you sell literally millions of albums. What would be the correct figure? Oh, uh, 14, 15 million. 14 or Small 15 Small figure, million. actually, nowadays, I think. But you do this, uh, correct me if this is uh, not true, with uh, without the benefit of a lot of uh, commercial uh, airplay, right? Yeah, on occasion. I've had a few uh, clicks going back in uh, 77, 78 with some Cat Scratch Fever and some other love songs, but other than that, <laughs> I, uh, I don't get a whole lot of radio play. There seems to be a trend in uh, programming radio that uh, gets a little gentle at times. Uh, and so you, you feel that people uh, would, uh, what, what is the reason that you're not included in that? Uh... There's a lot of wimps out there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's basically inconsequential because I just rock it out. Uh. Rock and rollers pretty much just go for it and uh, the wimps kind of wimp for it. <laughs> I got a, I... That's a touching sentiment, though. There are a lot of wimps out there. Keep that in mind, ladies and gentlemen. The streets are full of wimps. Uh, They're everywhere. They really all right, so then describe, you mentioned the other stuff as being sort of gentle compared to your music. What, how, what would be a description of your music? Well, I think the titles pretty much say it all. I, I give a lot of uh, time and concentration in my lyrics, you know. Mm -hmm. I feel it's really a, I feel it's a uh, important display of my art form. Uh -huh. Songs like... Uh, Wang dang sweet. <laughs> you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a compassionate kind of guy. <laughs> you yourself admitted that you're not the Motor City Madman. Uh, no, it's, I'm it's not. A unique, it's a unique right. presentation of uh, my inner feelings. Here. Yeah, yeah. And uh, thanks for pointing that out for folks just tuning in. I am not. The, this is the. Um, now, you, I know you play uh, the music loudly. Can you give us an indication of how loudly this... Uh... Yeah, I got, a, I got a perfect indication of that. Proud day in my life, actually. <laughs> uh, we were playing the Arrowhead Stadium in uh, Kansas City a few years back. There were about 60,000, 70,000 screaming dogs there. It was great. <laughs> and uh, we, uh, we go into a, a facility to play, you know, with the general... Uh, Detroit rock and roll attitude that overkill is good for you, mm -hmm. and we have these we have these technical advisors that uh, uh, come up with recommendations based on the size and the dimensions of the facility, uh, how much amperage you need and how many watts you could use, you know, mm -hmm. adequately. And so we we are uh, consulted with these advisors, and they came back and said, Yeah, Ted, we figure, boy, we've looked at, and we know you like to play loud. We figure, yeah, let's go, let's go sixty thousand watts of power and i went whoa well we put 120 per side jack i mean we're talking we said this is 1978 or 79 we figured hey who are we to stop at the uh, line we figured it was time for some experimentation so we put up 120 thousand watts per side it was great <laughs> and uh and we started yanking and a cranking and uh we understood they tried to they sh tried to shut the show down but of course there are 70,000 people on my side so they didn't but uh, uh, it turned out now dig this Dave you'll dig this it turned out that we they got uh, complaints uh, count them 18 miles away 18 miles away I guess the uh, the uh, cow productivity was diminishing as the set went on however the bull productivity went way up. Uh, wait, wait, as far as you know, 18 miles for a complaint is the record on a complaint I'm, like I'm quite confident that that's the lick right there. Now, has the, uh, in addition to being enjoyable, I'm guessing that uh, you, well, of course you find Good it guess. enjoyable. Good has, it, doesn't it affect you somehow? Hasn't it made you, I mean, have you had physical problems? Yeah. Uh, my productivity went way up. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, my left ear has been uh, severely damaged. Yeah. Yeah. That's a small oh, price no. to pay. <laughs> she damaged it. Get her over here. Now, this is, is she applauding for ear damage? <laughs> I've never heard anyone take a positive stand. <laughs> That's a rock and roll. There are rock and rollers amongst us. Now, will that come back? Will that your ear ever come back like Or is it gone? I hope not. 
No. Mm -hmm. Now, what about your uh, your other ear? My right ear's in good shape. I started wearing earplugs about, oh, 16, 17 years ago uh -huh. in my right ear because that was uh, absorbing the preponderance of sound on uh -huh. the stage. That's where the place of my amplifiers were. But I didn't start wearing earplug in my left ear till about 10 years ago, and the damage had been done. Yeah. Now, do you suppose there would come a time in your life, I mean, you've been a huge success and will continue to be so, but... When you, you you regret maybe that uh, you've hurt your ear like that? No, small price to pay. Yeah. You know, I uh, I can hear fine. You know, if you speak up a little bit, yeah. and I appreciate you doing so. <laughs> but uh, a little. But it, no, it's no problem. <laughs> now you wanna? We have. Uh, we would like for you to play something, Ted. If uh, if you don't mind doing that. No problem. Right now, you want me to do yes, sir. Naked? Yes, sir. If. Uh, how about if I come right over there by you, Dave? Is that all right? Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. Now, we'll, we'll, you, can add, you can go over there. Will this be 120,000 no, watts? Uh, strictly television. Okay. By the way, the reason I'm here, other than that you've got a very tasty show, is the fact that you've got the hottest band Absolutely. on television. Absolutely. Goes without saying. Let's talk about, uh, now I read that you were, uh, uh, had on occasion cut down uh, trees with uh, weapons, guns. Well, you know, a little target practice is good for a boy. What, ki what kind of gun uh, were we using here? Uh, Smith & Wesson Model 29, six and a half inch blue Magnum Porter 44 Magnum, 240 grains of solid lead, boy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a, it's a, it's a very uh, high quality handgun that I use with my children to uh, target practice. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. You, 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 uh, you are a gun collector and... Uh, I am a, uh, yeah. aficionado of fine firearms. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, but only recreationally, or do you, uh, I'm, well, of course you hunt, right? I'm available for, uh, no, uh defensive no, work. No, no, no. You no, I, uh, I, uh, I appreciate good tools. I like to get my hands dirty and grease my fingernails mm -hmm. and work on my trucks and be mechanic and play mm -hmm. games like that on the farm, you know what I mean? And, and I think guns are just a good, uh, nice, uh, tool that certainly have their place. I happen to, uh, supply my family, friends, and neighbors in half the state of Michigan with fresh meat. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, what, what kind of meat would this be we're yeah. talking about? Just, uh, I mean, is it, is it game, or are you go out shooting cows? I know that. that <laughs> no, actually, I, I've never bought any beef. Uh -huh. uh, I, I hunt uh, big game uh, during the fall of the year. In fact, during the fall of the year, I don't rock and roll. I like to uh, harvest my own food instead of paying somebody else to do my dirty work, <laughs> you little wimp. Oh, my. <laughs> Mine, mine, is, mine is not wrapped in cellophane. That's the only difference. Right? Now, now, let me ask you a question that you must hear a lot, and that would be... The... <laughs> I do hear that a lot. Congratulations, Ted. You've won a Buick. And, uh... <laughs> I 
I should do it, too, so that'll work out. Uh, uh, no, the, you, must, you must hear this a lot. People must say to you, well, now there are too many guns, and what about restricting the sale of handguns, and so on and so forth? How does that strike you, that argument? Well, that argument falls flat on its face because it's been well documented that wherever there are strict gun control laws, like in this city we're sitting in right now, there's a higher rate of crime than in cities all across the country where there are not strict gun control laws. Yeah. Well, I, well it, see, the funny thing is, Boo or no boo, it happens to be true, and it's been documented over and over. But what, based on what evidence? I don't, I don't, I don't have based that information. On, funny thing is, based on evidence compiled through investigations motivated by an anti-gun cause, and these people come up with the facts, and they go, you better hide these. <laughs> but, you know, uh, if, if in fact that is the case, it always seems to be the impression one Let, gets is not, to the contrary. If, in fact, I mean, here we are in New York City. Let's compare New York City where you are virtually prohibited and though you might say otherwise, virtually prohibited them from owning a handgun, certainly, and, uh, and highly restricted in owning any firearms whatsoever. Now, did you read the headlines today? Yes. All right, well, we needn't go any further. Let's take uh, uh, prorated, too, not a, and we're talking per capita. We're not just talking because New York's got all the people. But let's talk, uh, uh, name a city, and I'll, I'll give you a comparison, because I do look into this. Hey, I, what's, uh, you want me to actually name a city? I'll name it. Okay. Uh, Let's talk a, a western city or even a, a city like uh, Chicago or uh, uh, Des Moines where they have less restrictive gun laws. There is no comparison per capita in the crime. Crime is not, a, uh, is not relative to uh, weaponry availability or uh, uh, anything like material like that. It is an attitude that uh, permeates our society. Perhaps, but it certainly seems to be uh, the other way around. And it does seem to be because the media really has its head up. It's, uh, tailpipe. <laughs> All no, right. it is. I mean, I look deep into this because I, I like to think that I'm a, a realistic person and a responsible person, regardless if I am a Motor City man. Uh, uh, and I, I look, you know, I look into it because, you know, I've got children and uh -huh. I've got family and I've got friends and. Uh, uh, I see these things happening all the time. Okay, now we have, uh, let me find out something here. We're going to, okay, uh, let's, let's change the subject. Uh, Fine, I'm ready. Tell me about the, uh, your, your uh, cars. You, uh, you've had some trouble with the Detroit City Police uh, well, driving backward on the Stevenson Expressway at Rush Hour. Yeah. Well, getting back to this responsible attitude of mine. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, back in my youth, you know, I was a little bit wiry, rock and roll, my little brains out, you know. And uh, I remember one time that at rush hour, I've always, I've always aspired to be a race car driver. You know, I mean, I've always mm. typical white boy dream from Detroit. And uh, I didn't really have the outlet, so I remember getting stuck in rush hour. And I always used to look at rush hour as a as a race. <laughs> I'd win regularly, you know? <laughs> but you I would, would win, I huh? would win because I would take evasive maneuvers, uh -huh. and sometimes that called for a little reverse action. Mm -hmm. But I do race. Uh, when I'm not rock and rolling and when I'm not hunting. Now, I, you would be out there racing the wimps, I'm guessing, right? More, more. <laughs> yeah, that would be preferable. But no, I started racing profession last year, and I got, I got kind of whooped. You're doing some off-road uh, racing. Yeah, yeah. All right, we have, uh, do you have, uh, can you do another song for us? Hey, this is the question of the uh, moment. Just a little bit of a jam with maybe. Okay, you want to you stay here? You want to go over there? What do you want to do? Oh, Whatever you want to do. Okay. Okay.
hotel accommodations for most guests of Late Night with David Letterman, furnished by Berkshire Place, a Dunphy Classic Hotel, in exchange for this announcement. For reservations at Dunphy Hotels in the U.S. and Europe, call toll-free 800-228-2121. Thank you. Welcome back to the show. We have to uh, turn it off. I want to thank the studio audience and, of course, my guests tonight, uh, Graham Chapman and Terry Gilliam, and, of course, Mr. Ted Nugent for being here. Uh, by the way, this is... Uh, I guess this is the new album. Close up on this would be nice. Okay, there you go. Yeah, that's uh, a new baby right there. And uh, Bill Wendell, our announcer, Paul Schaefer in the band. Now, Monday, we got a big night coming up. It's haircut day on this show Monday. We'll have comedian Alan King and mayor of Chicago, Jane Byrne. Have a good weekend. Good night.